another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition, it's Strider, brought to us by Capcom. While there are similarities between this and the arcade game, also known as Strider, for the most part, they're two completely separate games. The engine that Capcom used is actually the same one they used in Bionic Commando, so you will actually see some similarities between this and that game. In the game, we control an elite Strider. The Striders are a unit or organization that specializes in demolition, kidnapping, and smuggling. The main character here, used best friend Kane, is actually kidnapped and becomes a liability for the Striders. And here, you is actually sent to kill him. And as you'll see as the game goes on, there's actually a giant conspiracy theory that unfolds as you collect different files located in the game. So here we go with Strider for the NES. After receiving your mission to kill Kane, you then get to the main screen of the game. Here you can analyze the disc you've collected, use the password system, or transfer to an area of the game, where Kazak is the only level in Soviet Russia that we can travel to right now. We'll unlock other areas of the world as we go through the game and find the hidden discs. The game includes a decent amount of backtracking where you'll have to come back to areas you've already been once you get new abilities in order to find items that are hidden away in the levels. While I have to admit Hiryu has a pretty weird walking stance, the overall combat in the game you can see is similar to games such as Ninja Gaiden, using just a simple sword blade to slash at enemies, easily taking them out, most of which will die in one or two hits. Jump along these columns at the bottom here, watching out for the guy flying above, shooting down below you, and then continue over to the right to this open area. Here we enter one of these tubes for the first time. These tubes will automatically transfer you really quickly to another area. Go up both tubes here and grab the first disc of the game. Then walk through this hallway to the second section of this level. As you complete levels in the game, the main character will actually power up, as well as you can get extra amounts of energy as well as power. You use your power or energy to do the special moves in the game. There's a variety of these special moves and you gain them as you go through the game. To be honest though, just the simple sword swipe is all you'll pretty much need to easily get through most of the game. Make your way up here and then start walking through the S-1 doors. Just keep attacking the enemies as they come down from the pipes above until you make it all the way over to the left and then jump over this robot in order to enter the next room. Doing so, you'll get a small conversation and then you'll also level up. Continue to stand still in the room, and you'll acquire the second file as well. Then start heading back to the beginning of the level, so we can make it back to the main hub and go to the next area. 
This is the first time where we'll have to do that backtracking that I mentioned earlier. You can also see that you have a current health meter of 20 to start with the game, but that also will go up as you make your way through the game, and you can collect different pills to increase that, as well as increase back the energy. But be very careful, because there's also skull pills you can pick up, which will end up hurting you and take away 10 of your health. One way to easily make it through areas a little bit quicker is hear your slide ability. Just like you would use the slide in other games, such as Mega Man, the slide easily allows you to go a little bit faster through certain areas, especially where there are slopes. To get back to the top though, you'll have to travel all the way to the left, and then you can start working your way up platforms to make it back to the very beginning of the stage. Once you're back here, jump up and you'll be back at the main hub. First, start off by analyzing the two discs that we picked up. Now that we actually have the disc, we can transfer it to a new area, so let's travel to Egypt. The Egypt area starts off on a large train, so start working your way over to the right, taking out the enemies as you jump from train car to train car. After the train segment, you'll actually be at the bottom of a pyramid, so start working up the slope. Just keep doing little short jumps and you should be able to take out the enemies as you do so. Then you can slide down the other side and you'll run through a couple of enemies while doing so, but if you time your jump correctly, you may be able to dodge some damage here. When you make it to the bottom, go down the pipe and then jump over the small amount of spikes and go up the other pipe on the left side. Start working your way up these platforms, taking out the enemies as you go. If you jump and hold up, you'll be able to take out enemies from below by going through the platform with a weapon. Over here, you'll have to do the weird wall jump in the game. It's a little bit hard to time and it'll definitely take practice, but, if you work on it, you'll be able to actually jump off one wall and jump up to a higher platform by doing so. Then work your way along the top, and then be sure to jump over the giant amount of spikes and go all the way to the left before going inside and grabbing the aqua boots. Once you have them, go back up the pipe and start working your way back over to the right. Jump up the series of platforms and watch out for the enemy above before dropping down the other side and start working your way down to the area below. Over here, take out the column by attacking it several times and then jump over the platform. When you make it down here, this is the area that we needed the aqua boots for. As you can see, you can walk on water. Just take your time and take out the few enemies that jump out of the water as you move across it. When you make it over to the right, it's time for a mini-boss. Duck down at just the left side of the purple bricks in the background, and keep slashing to the left. The guy will pop up and you can keep attacking him over and over again, and if you're quick enough, you should be able to defeat him before he goes back down to the water. You'll then have to do a few more wall jumps before coming up here, getting another little cutscene and leveling up again. You'll also get the key card number 2. This will allow us to go through number 2 numbered doors. 
jump up the pipe and enter the number 2 door and then work your way over to the right. As you can see, we're now back at near the beginning of the area. Go up the pipe and instead of going to the left and back up the pyramid, go through the right and you'll work your way through a series of tubes to get back to the area near the beginning of the level. Once you get all the way back there, jump up and go back to the main hub of the game. Once back here, go back to Kazakh and start making our way back into the main area where we were before, where we got our first keycard as well as the first documents. The enemies are the same here, so you shouldn't have too much trouble making your way back through it. Once back here, go up the first pipe and walk to the right, and then go up the next pipe again. As you can see, the door to the right there requires the S3 key. So instead, go up and go back into this area where we were before. Once again, drop all the way down, and then start doing the short jumps up the ramps, taking out the enemies as you go. Now jump over to the right and go up this tube to get to a new area of the stage. Be sure to jump over and now use your number 2 key card in order to go through the left door. Walk through another one and you'll get to a cutscene. It's now time for another mini boss. Jump over the bike and duck down as it goes past you and swipe it a few times. Then, jump over it again and continue swiping. After only about 5 or 6 hits, it'll explode and you can go through the left door. Grab the item as well as Kane and you'll level up again. You'll also get file number 3. Thankfully, we don't have to backtrack. Instead, just go to the left and you'll be teleported right back to the main hub of the game. Here, we're going to analyze file number 3. We learn a little bit more about the plot of the game, and then we also unlock a new area to travel to. This time, it's Japan. So go to the transfer, and now we're heading to the Land of the Rising Sun. After the cutscene at the beginning, you'll have another boss battle. Just duck down and keep swiping, and you'll be able to attack the guy multiple times, and then he'll jump back. Get close and hit him a couple more times, and you'll easily take him out. Then come down here for another conversation, as well as another level up. After the conversation, you'll also get the next file, file number 4. Once you have that, head back over to the left and unlock the door, and then go all the way over to the left to have another little mini thing against these two flying bat tight robots. A few jump slashes to each will easily take them out. After that, continue over to the left and talk to the guy here for an upgrade to your sword. Once you've gotten the upgrades, go back over to the right and then jump off this pipe. Then walk all the way over to the left and jump off to go back to the main hub of the game, and of course this time we're going to analyze the new file we got. Now after you analyze the file, you'll actually have a fight here. Walk over to the right and duck down right in front of the guy. It'll take a few seconds, he'll just stand there, but then he'll charge you. 
If you're able to get the swipes in, as soon as he starts charging, he'll instantly go down. We now head to the new level that we've unlocked on the map, China. Once here, work your way all the way over to the right and go past the pipes. Instead, slide down and drop off to the side to the right. After falling for what feels like forever, you'll land and be able to go inside the area. Work your way up the slopes, watching out for the robots as you make your way up. These guys take several hits to take out, as well as they fire out a projectile that rolls down the slope. After making it finally to the top, jump over to the platform on the right and go up the pipe. You can then grab the magnet boots. Once you have them, go back down the pipe to the left and start working your way over to the left. Jump up into the pipe and you'll be taken back to the beginning of the area, back on the top platform. Work your way back over to the left and jump up the side to return to the main hub. Then travel back to Kazakh. Once we're back here for the third time, start working your way back towards the building. It's the same enemies once again, and you should have a good grasp on the jumping as well as the sliding, and this can help you bypass some of the enemies or get back there a little bit quicker. Jump up both sets of pipes to enter back into the main area we've been to before. Once back to the top, go over to the left where the S1 doors are located. Take out the enemies as you go and just quickly get through to the far left room. Once in here, you'll now be able to climb up the left wall since we have the magnet boots. After traveling up the large wall, work your way over to the right, sliding under the pillars above and taking out the enemies. Jump through the small pipe on the top, and then go over to the right to grab keycard number 4. Once you have it, drop down the pipe and you'll be at the beginning of the S2 area. It's a huge pain, but you now have to travel all the way back to the beginning of the area and go back to the main hub of the game.
Once we're back here, now go back to the China level. Once back here, go down the very first pipe and you'll come to a door marked S4 where we use our new keycard that we found. Watch out in this area for the giant spike walls that comes towards you. Jump to the next hole and duck down so you can avoid getting hit by the spike wall, which will do a pretty decent amount of damage. Drop down the pipe on the right side and then start working your way over to the left where you'll fight a mini boss. This guy will jump along with you, so what you have to do is do a quick jump and then slide underneath of him and attack him when you make it to the opposite side that isn't protected by the shield. Then go down the pipe and do another section filled with the spike walls. Go down the pipe at the end and then when you're down here, jump onto the platform that's slowly moving. Transfer over to another one, and then jump down the left side into a new area. Once here, ride the elevator up to the top, watching out for the guns on the sides that are going to try to fire at you. Drop down here, making your way through the platforms, watching out for the guns on the walls, as well as the moving and non-moving spikes. Once you're at the bottom, work your way over to the right and you'll enter the first real boss battle of the game. These boss battles are pretty similar throughout the entire game and what you'll have to do is destroy the giant square that's moving in order to actually cause the main point of the enemy to be exposed and then you can jump up attacking the center part, easily taking it out with a few jumps and you'll automatically be transferred to the main hub of the game. You'll also be granted key number 3, and since you remember, we did see a key number 3 door located in Kazakh, that's where we're heading back to. Go through this pipe and then enter the S-3 door. We can finally go through this and enter a new section of the stage. Be very careful working your way along here that you watch out for the robot above floating, as well as don't accidentally fall down into the spikes. Be very careful here as you try to make your way over the spikes without taking too much damage. Slide underneath here and then go down the pipe. Walk through the door on the left and you'll now be at another one of those boss battles just like we fought in the previous level. Go to the right side and do a jumping attack to destroy the square and then do the same to the center once again watching out for the projectiles it fires out as best as possible. Once you destroy it you'll be back at the main hub. You're also given file number 5, so once you're back at the main hub, analyze it, and then we can travel to a new area.
Now we're traveling to the Africa level. Work your way over here and then jump on the water or dirt, whatever it's supposed to be, and then watch out for the alligators or crocodiles that are going to pop up and try to bite you. Work your way over here and when you make it to the top, start jumping up into the trees. Watch out for the guys that are hanging upside down because you'll accidentally jump into them or their fire may get you. Jump along the platforms up here and watch out for the spikes below as you make your way over to the left. Jump on this platform and then quickly jump over to the left before the platform ends up going down. Continue climbing and now you'll be heading back over to the right, continuing along platforms but also watching out for bird enemies here. Thankfully, they're not as hard or difficult as some bird enemies tend to be in old NES games, so they're pretty simple to take out with one sword swipe. Once over here to the right, we'll enter the next section, the cave area of the Africa stage. Be careful and watch out for the robots on the ceiling as you make your way over to the pipe. Then jump along the platforms before they fall down and drop down the left side. Work your way along the bottom, watching out for the guys dropping down from the spikes trying to fire at you. When you make it to the left, jump up to the moving platform and then slide under the giant pillar. Keep moving past all the robots that fire three consecutive shots and then go down the pipe on the far left side. It'll take a few seconds, but wait for the moving platform, then jump to it and ride it across all the way over to the right. You'll have to jump on another one about halfway. Once you make it over there, go down the pipe and you'll now be in the chamber of another one of those boss battles. This one's just the same as the previous ones. Move over to the far left to get the enemy on screen, then go over to the right and do a jump attack in order to take him out. He will move a lot faster than the previous ones, so it's a little bit harder to do so, but if you time your hits correctly, you'll easily take that one out. Then go to the center one and keep doing your jump attack to take out the middle main section of the bad guy. If you get hit once or twice though, don't worry, just keep trying to do your straight up jump attack, and you should be able to defeat him and end up leveling up and move on to the next area. Before doing so though, we have to analyze the sixth and final file. We now move on to the next level of the game, Los Angeles located in the US. When you make it here, ignore the two pipes above you and continue over to the right, making it through another one of those sections where a giant spike wall is trying to hit you. Just keep ducking in between and then, instead of going down the middle pipe or the left pipe, go all the way over to the right and enter the pipe there. You'll probably get hit at least once or twice while trying to make it through there. Next up, you'll have to take out another one of those motorcycle enemies like we did before, then jump in the pipe and ride it across into the next area. Once here, you'll end up finding where Sheena was located. After talking to Sheena, continue down to the bottom area and work your way across the giant spikes. Unlock the door for another cutscene. After the cutscene, keep attacking the barrier and eventually it will be destroyed. After the cutscene, you'll now be back at the main hub. Now we're heading to Australia.
work your way up the slope, and then jump along watching out for the spikes below. Slide down here and then open up the S-5 door with your key. Once down the pipe, watch out for the hanging soldiers and then make your way across the spikes. Thankfully, we have a lot of health now because there's a good amount of spikes and they're really hard to jump over, so you're definitely going to take damage there. Jump inside the pipe and ride it all the way across. Work your way along into this room. Wait a few seconds and one of those samurai enemies will appear. Just keep ducking and slashing and he'll keep jumping back every time he gets close to you and it'll only take a few seconds to take him out. Then go down the pipe for another boss fight. As expected, this one's definitely a little bit harder than the previous ones as it'll move a little bit quicker. However, it's actually easier than the Africa level. Just do the same thing we've been doing and you'll be back at the main hub. We now head to the final area of the game, the Red Dragon. As the area begins, go up the slope and then drop down the next slope watching out for the spikes below. Here you'll have to do a tricky wall jump and then you can easily get above so you can get into the pipe. If you do some fast slides, you'll be able to avoid all the enemies in this little area. Watch out for the dog enemy and go up the pipe and jump over to the right. Jump in between all the spikes and then go up the pipe on the far right. Here, watch out for the lasers above you. As long as you quickly keep moving and jumping, you should be able to avoid the laser fire. Here, go up onto the pipe on the right side and then continue sliding for a small cutscene. After the cutscene, continue on the bottom, watching out for the dog or going right through him and unlock the door on the far right. Once here, you'll have another boss fight. This enemy is pretty tough to deal with. He'll turn into a tornado after you hit him, so keep dodging and you won't be able to hurt him while he's in his tornado form. Get close and do one of your jumping attacks every time he goes up into the air. You'll be able to hit him at least one time, then he'll turn back into that tornado that you'll have to dodge. It takes a little bit, but it's a pretty easy pattern to get down. It just takes a while to get through the fight. Once he's taken care of, go through the door on the right, and then you'll get another cutscene. Once you're back in control, go into the pipe right above you. Here we're going to be using our jump ability, the one of the abilities that we've gained throughout the game in order to get to the section above us. Walk across all the pipes ignoring them and continue all the way over to the left side. It's now time for another fight, once again against the shield guy. Do a jump attack and then immediately slide underneath of him and get to the opposite side so you can attack him in the back before he turns around again. Then get over to the far left for another fight. Jump up and immediately attack the pod several times and it will explode after only 3 or 4 hits. Once that's taken care of, continue back over to the right and drop down any of the pipes located here. Continue over to the right and drop down this set of pipes. Once down here, you'll fight another one of those samurai guys. It's the same fight as we've dealt with the two other previous times. 
After he's done, walk over here and you'll get to a section with water, stand on it and duck underneath in order to attack the shark enemy again. This time though he has a lot more health, so he'll probably get above on the actual surface and start firing at you. Just keep up your attacks and you should have plenty of health in order to deal with them. Go through the pipe then, and then start walking up the giant wall. For the enemies on the wall themselves, you'll have to wait for them to come out of the wall a little bit with their attack, so you can actually duck and slash them. Once you're up here, enter through the door and then go up the tube. Walk over to the right for another one of those capsule enemies. Just stand still for a few seconds, wait for him to spawn, and then attack him three or four slashes and he'll be done. Then walk over to the left and talk to this guy. Once you're done with the cutscene, go down the pipe to the left. You'll now be back here. Walk over to the left and then drop down this pipe. You'll run into this guy again, but however, we can now open up the door to the right. Once you do so, go down the tube and then enter the door over to the left for another big cutscene. After the scene is over with, walk over to the left through the hallway, and then go down this tube. It's now time for another boss fight, once again the guy with the shield. Just keep doing what we've been doing, sliding underneath of him and attacking him in the back. Once he's done, you'll get down here and it'll be time to fight another one of those tornado enemies. And unfortunately this battle does take as long as the first one. Once he's done, go down the next pipe after grabbing the health, and you'll fight the samurai guy again. After easily taking him out, drop down the next tube and you'll now be in one of the big boss fights of the game. Stand in the middle and point your gun upwards and then build up the attack and fire it at him. This is the only way you can really do a lot of damage to him, because it'll knock his sword out of his hand. As long as you stand still and just only attack when his sword's out of his hand, he actually goes down rather quickly. Enter this hallway and it's time for the actual final boss of the game. This boss is just the same as all the other giant trees we've been fighting throughout the game. Stand in the middle and just keep doing jump attacks watching out for the balls that it fires out at the top. If you stand in the middle, the two blades it fires out will just easily go past you and work their way up the wall, only being able to hit you when they cross in the middle again. Just keep doing jump attacks and you can sit back and enjoy the ending.
So there we have Strider for the NES, as the credits will now begin the roll. It's also interesting to note about the game, it was actually made at the same time as the arcade game, as well as a manga that was released in Japan. However, the Japanese version of this game was actually delayed, causing it to never actually be released in native Japan. Instead, the US version is actually the only version of the game that was ever fully released. But even with that, it's still a pretty fun game and it's another solid effort from Capcom. Capcom easily one of the best third-party developers the NES ever had. While there actually was a sequel to the arcade game, there's also a few sequels that would be seen on the Sega Genesis console. Of course, Strider Hear You is also available in Marvel vs. Capcom and its sequel, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. After the credits, we come to our end screen, and it goes back to the opening title screen, you can start the game all over again. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.